Hi, I'm Nicole Gilbert, and this is the Stop Scrolling, Start Sewing podcast. Each Wednesday, join me as I share the ins and outs of that quilt life. If you don't have a sewing machine, or you can sew a pretty fly Y inseam, or even if you're just looking for the greatest and latest quilty news, this is the podcast for you. Folks, Nicole here. Welcome to season three, episode seven of the Stop Scrolling, Start Sewing podcast. Whether you are listening on your favorite podcast provider or watching on the Nicole Gilbert Quilt YouTube channel, I just want to say thank you so much for taking a portion of your day to spend with me. Okay, so on this episode of the podcast, we are talking about displaying your quilts and using your quilts as home decor. And this is something that over the years I have had a lot of difficulty with and I'll kind of get into that in a moment. Uh, But it's definitely one of those things that you kind of have to wrap your head around maybe, um, either in the pro or the negative version of it and kind of the best way to do it. So I've got all of the things to think about, as well as some tips, tricks, and useful items to display your quilts with. But before we jump into that, let's talk about the quilts on the wall. Okay, so this is Happy Stripes, and uh, this is a quilt pattern designed by Emily Dennis of Quilty Love. Um, This quilt is amazing. It's super beginner friendly, which is always fun because for beginners, it gets you a beautiful quilt that is accomplishable and achievable, which I think is so important. It's never fun to get frustrated with the project. For more intermediate or advanced quilters, this is a great fast project. So it's a win-win-win all across the board. Love this quilt. It is jelly roll friendly, and honestly, I think jelly rolls, uh, they were super popular for a really long time, and not that they've fallen out of popularity, but uh, with how amazing the designers have gotten, those fat quarter bundles and those charm packs have really kind of moved to the front as far as uh, friendly patterns go, Um, and so... I really love that this is jelly roll friendly because I collect jelly rolls and then I'm kind of like, what do I do with the thing? Here's what you do with the thing. So this is a jelly roll friendly quilt. It actually has many different sizes. So you can make this quilt in anything from baby to king, which and all of the directions are in the pattern to do any of those sizes. So it's a really versatile pattern. Uh, I want to say this is like the medium throw. So it's like kind of in the middle-ish, love it. For this one, I used a single jelly roll and then like a couple of scraps to like fill in some holes, like, cause I think I was short by like five of these little strips with one jelly roll. So I needed to do a little bit of addition. The pattern kind of lays out exactly how many strips and whatnot you need. For up to a medium sized throw, you can get away with just one jelly roll, which is pretty cool. Um, So those are the different uh, kind of sizes that you can get out of it. As far as technique, it's strip sets and stitch and flip corners, which really straightforward. Um, And I actually have a few videos on the YouTube channel for doing stitch and flip corners and strip sets. So I will link that in the description for you. Um, As far as the fabric that I used, this fabric is actually 99% of the fabric is Seashore Drive by Sherry and Chelsea for Moda Fabrics. And then the supplements that I used were Balboa, which is also by Sherry and Chelsea. And honestly, I think it's kind of seamless. You almost can't even tell. And honestly, I kind of can't tell which is Balboa. (laughs) And I think this one's Balboa, which is Balboa and which is, um, Seashore Drive. Uh, because those two those two uh, fabric collections went together just seamlessly. They're just gorgeous. I'm a big Sherry and Chelsea fan. 
I know most people will be like, okay, Nicole, stop talking about Tula. When I stop talking about Tula, I start talking about Sherry and Chelsea. Because I think that they're just wonderful. They do really traditional patterns. You know, ditzy flowers and basic florals, ginghams, stripes. They do really traditional prints in really fun colors. And that's like, I mean, that's everything. Love it. So that is the fabric. I will have links to the pattern, the fabric collections, all of that information that you might be interested in about the quilts on the wall in the description. Okay, so now that I've rambled about the quilts on the wall for long enough, let's talk about quilt decor. Okay, I've had an issue with doing quilt decor in my home for a really long time. And the reason why I've had that issue is there's a, it's a, few, there's a few things. I've had some, some stumbling blocks along the way. Um, one thing is that you may have noticed that my quilts are all very bright, very fun, very vivid. Um, that's what I adore. That's not necessarily what I adore in my home decor. If you go into my living room, it's bleached gray floors, a cream couch, soft blue pillows, gray window coverings, like very chill, kind of modern farmhousey, a little bit French country, like kind of something in the middle-ish there, which is very not big, bright, bold colors. So I have had some issues with um, kind of incorporating my quilts into my home decor because what I want in my home is not necessarily what I want in my quilts. Now, and I will get to how I kind of rectified that. Um, another thing is that for me personally, I'm not the kind of person who wants to see a quilt everywhere. I adore quilts, adore them, but there is kind of times and places for them, I think. Again, me personally, because I have uh, friends who I absolutely adore who do decorate quilts and I go into their homes and I'm like, this is beautiful. It's beautiful. I either A, don't know how to do it or B, it's just not my jam. I haven't really figured that one out, but it's just, it's just not being done in my home. So the first thing that we want to think about and I, I, all of that rambling was for a reason, I swear. Okay, so the first thing we wanna think about is what is our decor personality, okay? I have quilts all over my house. I do. I love using quilts. However, I think some people would be like, whoa, that's pretty sparing. Uh, and some people would be like, whoa, she's got them everywhere. Again, quilt decor personality. We need to think about this. For myself, personally, I have made the quilt that is on my guest room bed. I have made the quilt that is on my bed, my personal bedroom bed. I have made quilts that go onto my boys' beds, but uh, we're in that fun, late toddler, early elementary school age where things happen with their quilts. And so we've got a lot of Target quilts on their beds, too, because I just, I can't, I can't. You know what I mean? Little boys, I just can't. But eventually, they'll be on their beds too. I've got a quilt that lives on my couch because I am, I swear, I'm just freezing all the time. So I have a quilt that lives on my couch. I have the occasional quilted table runner, and it's very occasional. You, 80% of the time when you come into my house, you will see not a quilted table runner. Uh, either no table runner at all or like a very basic woven, you know, buffalo check, Joanna Gaines approved kind of table runner. Um, but I love, I have a, a table runner made from actually Balboa fabrics that I love to pull out uh, during the springtime just because I think that it like lightens everything and it just makes me really, really happy. I have another one that goes with my Christmas decor, which actually looks great because I take my typical centerpiece off of my table and I have like a, a big silver nativity set that 
acts as my centerpiece during the holidays. And so that, that Christmas table runner looks good there. But again, I just named two very time frame specific table runners. The rest of the time, it's not on there. Um, and that is kind of it for me personally. So, I mean, if you didn't go into any of the bedrooms and it's, you know, July, uh, you might only ever see the one on the back of the couch, you know? Now, I have a dear family friend who I absolutely adore and she has a quilt hanging as wall art in the middle of her living room. Uh, she has quilts hanging as wall art in the hallways of her home. It's beautiful. She chooses amazing quilts. She rotates them out. So uh, there's, you know, you come in and it's like a new pop of color every, you know, season or so. And it's it's really cool and I enjoy it. Um, but, but you got to think about what your personality is. There are some personalities, which is wonderful. This is another personality where um, you, want to, you want to make things for your home. I know that sounds so weird. You want to make things for your home. We all want to make things for our homes. We're quilters. And for a lot of us, we're, you know, we're the person in our, in our house that makes our house a home. Um, but... Uh, you know, there's, you know, you can make quilted liners for your drawers in your bathrooms. You know how you usually put like some sort of liner in there to protect your shelving. You can make quilted ones of those. Uh, you can have quilted placemats. You can have table runners, table toppers. You can have, um, you know, sideboard covers. So like table runners that go on like sideboards or sofa tables or credenzas. Uh, those could all be quilted as well. Uh, you can have quilted uh, wall hangings, quilted uh, like curtain valances. I mean, the, the sky's the limits of the things that you can quilt. Um, and personality-wise, is going to be kind of where you end up on that meter of, you know, absolutely nothing. Nobody would even know that you're a quilter all the way up to if it sits, I stitch it kind of a deal and everything in between. And they're all right. There's no right or wrong way to de decorate your house. There just isn't. I mean, I'm sure if you were like, I don't know, were any of you as obsessed with like Jeff Lewis as I was when he was on Bravo, like obsessed? Um, I'm sure Jeff would be like, whoa, there's a, a time and a place. But you know, I, I think that it's all right. I mean, it's a hobby, it's a craft, and it's all about design and desire. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. All parts of the spectrum are good. Um, also, my husband purchased something for me, which again, look, this was purchased, and it was absolutely gorgeous. It was at a dairy uh, here in the Kansas City metro area. We actually were out here visiting, and this was a while ago. This was uh, several years ago. We were out here visiting family. So we, uh, I have in-laws that live uh, in Kansas. So we were out here visiting family, and we went to uh, Shadow Dairy, which is really cool. If you ever have the uh, chance to visit, you really should because you get to like milk a cow, see how milk is made, and they have like so many flavors of milk, which is weird and awesome at the same time. Uh, if you've ever done a milk tasting, again, weird but awesome, tangent. But anyway, they also, in the shop, had barn quilts. And so a lot of times we see barn quilts that are painted on the sides of, the, of houses, they're on barns and garages and, and you know, large buildings. This barn quilt is about maybe 50 inches by 50 inches. And instead of being painted like a, a traditional or, or commonplace uh, barn quilt that you think of, it was actually stained pieces of wood. And the wood was all stained in like natural tones. So not colored in any way, but it was all natural tones from like bleached driftwood all the way to like a nice like honey color. Um, and it was a, a Lemoyne star. It's a Lemoyne star uh, quilt block. 
uh, and it's fabulous. And that is on the wall in my living room. And so I've brought some quilty things into my home without them having to be so um, obviously quilted. You know what I mean? Like that is, like my mom saw it and she was like, that's really cool. That's beautiful. It's something I would put in my house. And my mom is not crafty. Like not crafty at all. And she's like, that's that's pretty cool. Um, and so there's, there's other ways to approach it is I guess what I'm trying to say. So that's quilty personalities and how to think about it. Now, what types of quilts are you displaying? is another thing that you really need to think about. One, for the use and longevity of your quilts it's themselves. And then uh, just for like continuity sake, uh, it's really going to, to adjust like what looks good. Because at the end of this, we still want our house to look good. And what that means is different for all of us, which is wonderful, but we all still want our houses to look good. So we wanna talk about like, What's a display quilt and what's a functional quilt? Uh, so a lot of my quilts, like I would say 80% of my quilts are functional quilts. I like a quilt that you can use. I don't make, you know, show quality quilts very often. Um, I usually, when I make a show quality quilt, it's because I'm trying to put it in a show. Like very purpose driven. I, some quilters make, have standards where every quilt that they make is a show quality quilt. And that's really cool. And like kudos to them. I don't got time for that. Totally fine. So, um, the reason why I want you to think about this is because the quilt that you choose to hang on your wall that nobody is ever going to touch is going to be of a different quality than the quilt that you have on the back of your, your couch. Um, a show quality quilt, one, you've probably put a sleeve on it. I know this is weird that that was my number one, but you've probably put a sleeve on it, which makes it hangable in several different ways. Um, you know, you're using fabrics that uh, would potentially not hold up to the test of time if it was getting scrunched and bunched by or made into a fort by a seven-year-old. Um, and so, you know, it might have a lot of whites. There might be some finer finishings to the fabrics. You might have used some more delicate sewing techniques. They might be completely hand-stitched. Uh, there's a lot of things like that. Those are quilts that you want up on the walls that nobody's going to touch. Like no one's gonna touch that thing, okay? Now the quilt that goes on the back of the couch, and I keep on saying that, and every time I say that in my head, I see that uh, Granny Squares crochet quilt on the back of the Roseanne couch, um, which um, is kind of giving me nightmares right now, to be quite honest. Uh, but like my quilt on the couch is actually either usually draped over the ottoman uh, cause we've got one of those big, like 40 by 40 inch, like giant ottomans. Cause we've got one of those like giant sectional kind of deals going on. Um, or it's like draped over the arm. Like it's, it's got like an artisanal drape going on. I'm not folding it in half and putting it over the back of the couch. Again, decor style. That's me. That's not you. That's fine. Um, but that quilt, that quilt gets picked up a hundred times a day. That quilt turns into capes, it turns into fort tops, it covers my husband and I while we cuddle and we catch up on Love is Blind. It does all of those things. Um, and so those quilts are sturdy. They are sturdy. Uh, there's nothing fussy about them. Um, and honestly, they're not, sometimes they're not the most beautiful quilts. What I do, however, is the quilts that go on my couch are a different color scheme. 
don't hate me, but Tula does not make it onto my couch. And I love Tula. I use her all the time. Tula does not make it onto my couch because I want it to still go with the vibe. Now, colors like this will sometimes make it onto my couch. Lots of like uh, bright whites will make it onto my couch. Um, you know, seasonal ones will make it onto my couch sometimes. So like a 4th of July-ish one will make it out there or something. Um, nothing that's overtly 4th of July though, but that's more, that's more my personal choice. Uh, when I make a 4th of July quilt, I'm, I don't use fabric that has like little flags on it. That's again, personal choice. I use something from like Minnick and Simpson where the whole line is very red, white, and blue, but it's traditional florals and, and whatnot. Tangents, left, right, and center in this episode, guys. Sorry. Um, but... Uh, I choose only quilts that are medium to large throw size. I don't want it to be too big because nobody wants a queen size quilt on their couch. Um, but I don't want it too small because I still want it to be actually be cozy and comfortable. So function, we're thinking about function here. And then I do make sure that the color schemes go with my furniture and, and my decor at the time. So that's functional quilts. Now there's like this subsection of functional quilts uh, that we want to think about as well. Now some people are going to have, um, you know, do like the lining of the drawers with the quilt, with the like small quilts, uh, which is great. Um, but with those, you might want to keep in mind when you're making them in the first place, you know, the color choices that you pick so that they look good over time. What we would hate is like you use a really light color and then they start to look dingy and now what was a cute little surprise decor pop when your drawers are open now is kind of like a, oh, are you gonna change that out kind of a deal? We wanna avoid that. We want these things to still look beautiful. We want them to still look good. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your fabrics. Uh, another place that I personally do use quilting is in my pot holders. I love me a mini charm pack pot holder and uh, like casserole liner. So like I could put it down on my table and put a hot casserole on it and like serve family style from there and I don't burn my tabletop. Um, I actually have a video uh, and downloadable quilt pattern if you're interested in making your own. So I'll put those in the in the description. But um, I use uh, mini charms for that, which so quick, so inexpensive. They look great together because it's a full fabric collection that's been curated to go together. Uh, they're just they're just amazing. For those, you can kind of do sky's the limit because ninety percent of the time they're in a drawer, they're in a cabinet, and then they just get pulled out to handle hot dishes and and whatnot. And I do have several sets of them, and so I do have a Christmas set. I do have a springtime set. I do have a summer like picnic-y set. Um, and so it's just like a fun little like, oh, cute. But again, 90% of the time, it's away in a drawer or in a cabinet. So at first glance, looking around the house, it, you wouldn't really see it. Um, another thing that I have quilted, oh man, now I'm starting to really think about it. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm quilting the home decor. Um, my husband, <laughs> And maybe this isn't home decor because it goes in the camper, I guess. I don't know. I'll get there. Um, is My husband is a, an avid hunter. And my one of my sons is an avid fisherman. And so we have a camper that we take out often. And they go fishing and whatnot. And so we have this assortment of very pricey, heavy, extremely sharp knives that uh, get thrown into a camper drawer. So I've created sheaths for these knives so that uh, nobody gets injured rooting around in a camper drawer because things move in camper drawers because you're driving. Um, and so those are really cool. 
And those ones you can get a little fun with. You can get a little bright with. You don't have to really think about it because, again, they're in a drawer. Nobody's really seeing them. But then you take them out and somebody's like, oh, my gosh, look at your little covers. And you're like, I know, it's so cute, right? I made it myself. We love that. We love those moments. And by we, I mean me. Just saying. <laughs> I love being like, yep, yeah, I made that. No big deal. Uh, so with functional ones, though, we want to make sure that we're being conscious. So for things like those knife sheath knife sheaths um which uh, i've made out of just like quilt sandwiches and then bound them um what i've also done is i take liquid vinyl uh which uh that brand heat and bond makes they come it comes in little jars and you like like pour it over your fabric and it turns any quilting cotton into not white as sturdy as like an oil cloth but it gives it that repellent uh level um and i adore it it's really easy to work with i use that on it and so then that way it's wipeable it's cleanable it's not gonna get grubby on you uh because i always think of these like my my grandmother had these pot holders and i just remember they were like brown around the edges and she adored them and they were beautiful and she made them herself and um they were great but i just don't want anything to ever look kind of grubby that's just my own personal thing um it's just who i am i like things to be bright i like things to be white i like things to be crisp that's just my my thing so this goes back to like decor personality kind of stuff okay so that is like functional stuff another thing with functional is like the table runners table toppers placemats I'm not really a placemat person, and I don't know if that makes me like a weirdo. I don't know. I'm approaching 40, and I'm like, wow, I still don't have placemats. Like, I remember when my husband and I first moved in together, and we were in our early 20s, and I was like, hmm, we're not placemat people. And now I'm starting to think, I'm like, oh, did we like miss a boat here? But anyway, we're not really placemat people. Uh, but placemats are a great way to jazz up your table. Placemats are gonna get way more use and way more washing than a table runner or a table topper though. And so a table runner or a table topper can be a little bit fussier, can be of a little bit fancier uh, materials. You could use, you know, some, some different kind of stuff there. You could bring out some silks. So like my Christmas one is kind of made of raw silks, which is just beautiful, uh, but it's also not getting anything on it. I mean, there's a nativity set on it where we're pretty like, we don't touch it. A placemat, I mean, I've got I've got three boys under the age of eight, so placemats in my house would get pretty um, demolished. They would be getting washed all of the time. And maybe that's why I haven't gone into the placemat realm is that I went from a young husband to young children and it's just like, just why? Just leave the bottle of Lysol on the counter because I'm just wiping everything all of the time, all of the time. But placemats, so placemats have to be done a little bit more sturdily. Um, and I just, I want to make sure I don't miss any things. Okay. So that's kind of like the functional versus the display. Um, now, and we've talked about kind of places to display them, where to display things. We've got, we've gone, for, we've run the gamut from wall hangings to bedspreads to, you know, actual functional uh, kitchen items. Now let's talk about like display notions. If you want to display your quilt on the wall, uh, there are, I would say two really big ones and then one that's like used all the time that I really want people to stop doing. So let's talk about them. The first is using a curtain rod and curtain clips, which is actually how I display the quilt on the, on the wall uh, here in the studio. Uh, you can't see it because it, this one is actually mounted to the ceiling, but uh, most people would mount them to the walls. And it's just a traditional curtain rod. And then curtain clips, which you can get so inexpensively uh, like on Amazon. I will, I will put like kind of examples and links to these in everything I'm about to discuss in the description but uh curtain clips are just like rings like curtain rings that have little grippy clips on them and you just clip 
the top of the quilt and it hangs there. And it's really easy. It's easy to change them in and out. It doesn't injure the quilts at all. It's just a really, really good, functional, easy option that I think is probably one of the best options. You don't have to do anything uh, different with your quilts, which is also uh, big. Second one is using some sort of rod system and putting a sleeve on the back of your quilts. And this is where I was just mentioning, like you don't have to do anything special with the curtain clips. With the curtain rod, you're actually sliding the rod through the back of the quilt, which for some people love it because then you usually don't see the rod at all. With the curtain clips, you're gonna see the rod, you're gonna see the clips. So you need to have like a pretty rod and, a pr and pretty, pretty clips. Uh, but with the sleeve option, you don't really see anything. You just see the quilt, which can be very appealing um, for obvious reasons. But you will need to put a sleeve on the back of your quilts. For those of you who are making show quality quilts, this is not an issue because you're already putting a sleeve on the back of the quilt because the shows require it. That's how they, they display the quilts. And so you may already have sleeves on the back of all your display quilts anyway. Not a big deal. Um, another version of the quilt clips is there, there's no rod involved. It's like, I don't personally have them. I've seen them. I kind of want to get them, but I haven't really decided if I'm a wall display person or not, so I haven't invested. Um, but they are kind of like little, uh, you can see my hand here doing something weird, right? Um, they're, they're like little clamps kind of, and they get screwed to the wall, and you open them up, you slide your quilt in, and then you ratchet them kind of down and they're just little clips and they just kind of hold it up. So think about like if you were to pinch a quilt in the corners and hold it up in front of you like how you see on you know how you see on the uh internet like quilters displaying stuff they like hold it up. That motion of how your hands are holding it is kind of how these clips hold it. If that makes sense. I don't know. I hopefully I'm describing it well enough. There will be a link in the description so that you can see actually what I'm discussing um, or trying to demonstrate. Um, but those are really cool too. Super nondescript is what I like about them. You're talking about something that's like maybe two inches wide, three or four inches tall, and in relative to the size of some of the quilts that you're going to hang, um, pretty, pretty, pretty minimal. Uh, so that's, those are pretty cool too. Now, the option that I want people to stop doing, though everybody does it, and if I'm being 100% honest, I've done it as well, is using push pins or teeny tiny nails to hold your quilts up for several reasons. One, if you're, it's gonna be a wall hanging, you're not concerned, it's never getting moved, you're never gonna see it down, I guess it's fine, but I personally don't think any of your quilts should be on the wall for that long, for longevity. And I'll talk about that in a second. But what happens when you use a push pin or a tiny, tiny nail is that it puts a little hole in the quilt. And the longer it hangs there, the longer that um, hole is going to remain. So what's interesting is you may make a mistake when you're sewing and you seam rip and you see the holes from your needle stitches. But over time, you know, your, your the, the weave of the threads in the fabric kind of get back into shape and those holes go away. But if something, and, but that's, think about, those holes have been there for 10 minutes tops and then you're ripping them out and, and fixing it. A quilt that's hung from pins, those holes are gonna be there for months. For some of you, they might be there for years. For some of you, they might be there for decades. Like, you, we don't know. Those holes are pretty stubbornly in there and then add in just the weight of the quilt pulling. They might be strong enough to hold up the quilt and you might not notice it, but there's still weight. There's still a drag happening there. Uh, and those holes are just not gonna go away. And that's a bummer. It's just a bummer. Now, hopefully nobody's quilt is hanging for that long. Whether you are displaying your quilts on the couch, on a quilt ladder, in a basket, on the wall, we want to trade out our quilts regularly. We want to rotate them regularly because exposure 
is the biggest demon to our quilts. Uh, sunlight, oils on our hands, this is what damages our quilts over time. We want them to be used, we want them to be loved, but there's a reason why there's a quilt that you're okay with putting in the back of your truck, and there's a reason why there's a quilt that you're okay putting on your couch, and there's a reason why there's a quilt that you're not okay with anyone touching ever. And we want to make sure that all of our quilts stay in the best possible position and condition that they could possibly be in. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are trading them out, um, especially the ones in our kitchens and our dining rooms. Not only are you battling the sun and natural oils from our hands as we're handling things, but you're also battling uh, kitchen grease um, and vapors and fumes from our cooking that can get in them as well. Uh, and that can majorly discolor, fade, or just make kind of grungy or grimy over the years. So there's also that. Uh, now that was wall hangings in general that I was just discussing as far as like ways to hang them up. Quilt baskets. I love a quilt basket. I'm going to impl be implementing one this year. I just have to find the perfect basket. I saw a couple in Ikea and a couple in Target that I'm obsessed with. Like big drum style baskets with uh, like wire baskets with like leather or wicker or wooden handles that I can roll my quilts up into like little tubes and stick them in there. There'll be fun little pops of color in the corner. They can get pulled out to be used for forts because I, I mean, I can't leave a blanket out with it not becoming a Superman cape or a fort top. It just is what it is in this house right now. It's, it's my current phase of life. Um, but I think that would be a lot of fun. And I mean, I've seen this done in so many ways. My mom is not a quilter and she always has had a basket of pillows and blankets in the corner of her uh, living room. As a matter of fact, my mom used to have like such a museum quality living room. My mom was, is a very exacting person, um, that she actually bought us like floor pl pillows and blankets because like she didn't want us to get too cozy on the couch. True story. Cause like her couch was brand new and beautiful and just too pretty for the peasants, i.e. the children to sit on. Uh, this is a very true story. But anyway, um, a basket of quilts in the corner, always fun, always cozy, and it warms up a room. That's one of the things, um, just light bulb. That's one of the things that I love about including quilts into our decor. Uh, especially for those of us in my generation where modern contemporary clean lines have kind of taken over which is great I am also a person who is who is like that quilts add warmth they add comfort they make it look like people live here and I personally think that that is very very important to include in a home you want it to look cozy and quilts really help something look cozy um, oh, pillows, quilted pillows. Amazing, amazing way to add quilting to your decor. Have it not be a huge like, whoa, thing. Um, and it's just really, really cute. And I do do quilted pillows. Um, again, I have a tutorial video that I will link uh, in the description below. Wow, I've just got videos and, and links all up the yin yang for you guys today. Lots of stuff to really dive in and, and learn more about this topic, which I didn't think I had that much uh, stuff, but I've got a lot of stuff going on. But anyway, uh, a quilted pillow sham is always a great way to go as well. Uh, and it will add that warmth, that comfort level. Another thing would be a quilt ladder which kind of obsessed with quilt ladders. Um, now, not all quilt ladders are created equal. Um, they can range from $30 to like $400. They could be, you know, old steam pipe look, which is kind of cool, uh, through like really heavy high end like wood finishings. What I will say you want to look for when getting a quilt ladder is for the space, like the actual rung, so the space between the two posts, to be at least 24 inches. And that might actually look a little wide to you, 
but that is going to allow you to neatly fold your quilts and get a nice smooth drape to them. If it's too narrow, it'll get too bunky, bunchy and it'll look weird. If it's too wide, it will kind of fall flat and they'll look more like sheets than quilts, if that makes sense. Um, hopefully it does. But uh, there you have it, guys. That is the uh, breakdown of the home decor, displaying your quilts uh, of it all. Like I said, I have a ton of uh, links for you to check out from the different display products that I mentioned to some tutorials for some of those home decor items that we discussed. Um, as well as also all the information for the quilts on the wall. So all of that is in the show notes or the video description for you. Uh, I hope you have an amazing week and don't forget to stop scrolling and start sewing. Bye for now.